four minutes. And then the audience will clap to judge uh, which side is more convincing, which one is more truthful or intellectually honest. So we have two people here today. Yeah, who, who do we got? We got David Silverman. Hey, everybody get a round of applause to David yes. Silverman. This and guy's Elias from Kakarot. So let's go. Yeah, y'all, why don't you all both be up here at the same time? Um, you could, yeah. And um, yeah, 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 they're yeah. gonna have fun with it. So what we got is this. We're gonna have uh, each of you go one at a time. And then um, once uh, I'll be like, just saying, okay, now flip to the other side. I'll judge the audience for all of that. Um, which, but, but actually first, uh, who are you two? Go ahead and introduce yourself with your name, affiliation, and yeah. My name is Elias. I'm the CEO of Kakarot ZK EVM. We're building a provable EVM, not so far from Polygon Zero, I guess, or Polygon uh, ZK EVM. Uh, I'm David Silverman. Uh, I'm with Polygon Labs. We uh, are an Ethereum scaling solutions company building the Aglayer. All right. Thank you all so much. Who would like to go first? You would like me. You're, the, you're the guest. You're the guest. You are yeah, yeah, <laughs> the guest of honor. You could do it sitting down. You can do it standing up. Just say what your topic is when you're saying the pro side, and then once you switch. And you will be getting uh, about, let's say, three to four minutes per thing. Um, you, and if you want, I will uh, keep time, and you can also keep time on there. That would be amazing. All right, I'll tell you when it's, when it's ready. You start whenever you want. I will try to sit up. If I stand, I will kind of like oh, jiggle sorry. and it will be annoying. My topic is I have to go for and against OP rollups versus ZK rollups. Yeah. Woo. Spicy. <laughs> I think so. I would like to start that I think we have finally solved this debate. Two or three years ago, at the beginning of rollups, this debate was very sentimental. So the cryptographs, the cryptographers, sorry, and people who really enjoyed ZK saw it instantly as this revolutionary technology and saw it as the hammer to every nail. But they didn't see that they started from the tech and like kind of suffered from the UX. So my point in favor of Pilorlops is they took what UX they wanted. Let's take, for example, Arbitrum. They took the UX they wanted, so 250 millisecond uh, response time from the user standpoint, maybe very low fees. And then they said, given the existing state of the art, how can we make it fit? Uh, same goes for OP Labs. So um, I think OP chains have massive advantage today. And this, this is facts over ZK rollups. First is adoption. So if you sum base, OP mainnet and Arbitrum mainnet, um, TVL, you get close to uh, 20 million, uh, 20 billion, sorry, 20 billion dollars. If you sum Starknet, Polygon ZK VM, um, ZK Sync, you get barely 2 billion if you don't count the tokens. Maybe if you do, you get 5, maybe ish. Um, so, adoption. And how did they get adoption? They got it from first mover advantage, they got it from network effects of EVM because everyone was so bored of getting $20 transaction on L1, and they got it from stability and maturity of the stack. So today, there's 100 rollups in production. 75% of them are OP rollups, and they are run by providers. Those providers are all the likes of Conduit, Altlayer, Caldera, Gelato, Espresso, um, Gateway FM, many of them. If I forgot your name, Carnot, uh, I'm sorry, but there are many of them. And these people like to work with boring software unsurprising software and cheap software. So today, to run an Orbit chain, so which is an Arbitrum framework, you need, for a small chain, so today most chains are small, they don't get more than three TPS of bandwidth, you need $2,000 per month for your sequencer, your RPC, your explorer. To run um, Polygon CDK, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if you have one TPS of bandwidth, if you are running the prover, some people don't run the prover, you are more around 10K dollars. Sure. Plus or minus two. Of course, so that's, that's the state of the business. So today people go for the cheaper options. Because at the end of the day, people don't yet care about security. And training wheels are very much on. In two years, in one year, and I think maybe in six months, this will change, so turn coating. Um, I think optimistic rollups suffer from a very, very incurable disease that I think we got wrong. We initially thought it was the seven day withdrawal period, but actually 
No one uses canonical bridges. They use intent bridges. So you bridge from Arbitrum to OP in 10 seconds using, I won't say names, I'm not affiliated, but intent bridges. So no one is actually suffering from the seven days. You could argue that a financial system is suffering from the seven days because if you entangle state, let's say from Arbitrum, OP, base, and you entangle state back and forth and back and forth, and then one of these chains get a challenge and roll back, so they kind of like reversibly erase the state that they wrote, you can create like a huge trickle down effect where you destroy lots of value for lots of customers. And that really sucks. But actually, I would argue that the worst, problems, the worst problem is way deeper is the risk, like the attack vector on an, on an optimistic chain scales with the TVL. So today there exist attacks that are consubstantial to fault proof systems. Um, and these attacks enable an attacker that has enough funds to steal the entirety of your canonical bridge um, um, locked uh, money. So today, if um, you have 20, 19 billion TVL on Arbitrum, uh, you need 15%, sorry, an attacker that has 15% of that sum available, which is a lot, arguably, they can still try to steal those funds. And the only thing preventing them to do it is the Security Council. So it is very convenient that an optimistic roll say, OK, we have a fraud proof system. Everything is permissionless. Everything is proven. But then the day they get attacked, which of course it's very hard to do because you need billions of dollars, but you could steal theoretically the entirety of the optimistic, optimism, sorry, mainnet TVL with a sophisticated attacker. It is possible. Of course, the Security Council would just come and deactivate the proof system. So there is an incurable disease, which is the fraud proof system is, 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 is faulty. And of course, you can spend years redesigning it to lower the vector of attack. But then these years are just going like, to enable ZK to become cheaper and cheaper. So five years ago, it was inimaginable that we could prove the entirety of L1 blocks for less than a million dollars per year. Now we can. And I argue that the next generation of provers that Polygon is pushing and we are pushing with Starkware um, uh, the circle stack is going to enable us to have real-time proving and actually cheaper proofs than the risk, the expected value of a risk of an attack of a, an entire financial system. So for that, I think the only frontier that ZK has to break, break sorry, is the 10x cheaper uh, frontier, and we are breaking it together. I would say because it's co-research. Um, every day and 2025 is going to be i think the first year where you're going to see op rollups transitioning to zk all right we're at time go ahead david awesome uh i think i'm on the side that you're on for that one <laughs> that your underlying one uh i'm going to take a different tack uh i i operate a lot in userland uh and so uh, my first position is that web3 devs are amazing and build really, really great software. Uh, I remember the magic of the first time I actually paid someone in crypto and then rediscovering it again when I actually like, did a real actual invoice in USDC. Uh, I, I mean, the ability for me and others to have access to all sorts of financial tools that you don't get access to easily, such as using Aave, basically, for a portfolio line of credit, uh, and so much more. Is, is truly, truly crazy. And the fact that all of this is happening on thousands of distributed computers around the world, no actual trust intermediary. When, when you zoom out and think about it, it is crazy magical what we have built uh, and what Web3 devs continue to build. Um, the sheer amount of innovation of, and is judged by not just the existence of this conference, but all of the side conferences that have popped up, uh, let alone the number of major things we have of you know, different companies, et cetera. The, the diversity of what's being built is amazing. Um, that's side one, the pure magic of what has been built and what is coming. Uh, on the other side, Web3 devs are kind of bad <laughs> and, and, and don't know what they're building a lot of the time, and, and we make a lot of excuses for them in the space. Um, do we have a lot of degen traders here? Just, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the, the things that we have to go through compared to the degen trading I have to do on Robinhood, I don't know why we accept this as normal. 
Uh, I don't know why I have to have a 24 word seed phrase written down somewhere, probably in a, in a notes app. I know some people that have it like literally stored in Google Drive. Please don't do that. What, what? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, Lazarus is listening. Um, <laughs> Why am I have to break up every step of a transaction I do? I need to uh, approve, wrap into WEF, and change and do all sorts of things. I, it, it's it's crazy. I, I use a if I was using a, you know a modern fintech app like a wealth I, I can take multiple steps and not have to worry about anything. I have to worry about switching between chains. I have to worry about UXs that are completely nonsensical. We're all still using the same Uniswap web swap, web web gadget from what three four years old at this point. No creativity on the UI UX, and I'd say I, I, I'll concede a couple of outliers. There's a, a great app from Zora. I think a really holistic, amazing experience. I think DYDX has done a great job of abstracting experiences. Heck, I'd say FriendTech, which we all used for maybe two weeks, had a better onboarding experience than apps we all use pretty regularly. Um, those are my two positions, that Web3 devs are, are amazing in certain ways, and we, we give a, a lot of excuses for their poor behavior in so many other ways. All right, so we're voting now, right? We got it? Yes, yes, all right. Let's start with the first position from Ilias. The pro on, actually just go over with the, the, the pro like in one sentence. The TLDR of both positions. Uh, just what, the statement. Pro, what was your pro? Yeah. Oh, no, okay. The one you were actively arguing for. I have for. to say, yeah, yeah, I one. thought it was secret. No, 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 no. So I, I argue that uh, ZK rollups are on the brink of being just outright better in every way to optimistic rollups. Gotcha. Who's, who agrees with that one? Okay. All right. And the other side of it was what? Oh, okay. And the other side was optimistic rollups have reached the flywheel velocity to just um, look down on ZK rollups and treat them as like academics and sweeties, sweeties that they will like hire later to switch. <laughs> Who agrees with that? <laughs> Man, there are some, some sympathy woos out there. Um, all right. And so I think we know which one won that. It was the pro side. Um, do you want to reveal what your actual opinion was? I, my opinion is, um, I think, first. But it's, it's, it is maybe, it, it, there is space to, like, the, the world might be different. The, the, Z, the ZK guy likes ZK rollups. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, go ahead. Yeah, my, my, the first position I was arguing for is that Web3 devs uh, are amazing. They build incredibly magical software that we have begun to start to take for granted. All right, who agrees with that? Oh, all right. The other side I was arguing is that Web3 devs are good at some things, pretty garbage at a lot, and we make excuses for poor experiences. <laughs> Wow. All right. All right. I kind of agree, but can we blame the product owners? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Sounds like the second one. David, reveal your side. Well, I believe in elements of both. I think I've shifted over the number of years to the we need, we need much better front end and experienced devs in the space. And I look forward to, I congratulate the teams that have built great experiences and look forward to seeing more. Wow. That's very gracious. Let's all clap for both of them. Thank you all so much. Um,